So yeah, other people Indeed. are the cause of your problems. That's very helpful. Because if other people are the cause of your problems, you can go to where those people aren't and you'll have fewer problems. This is something um, a guy I did business with years ago, he said to me, if difficult people are in your life, you'll have a difficult life. Something that always stuck with me. You know how you just like, you grab these little shreds, of, 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 like stuff's going through you, like, like the matrix, just stuff trickling down through the screen, or you're going through hyperspace, and all these ideas are brum, 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 going past you. I just remember that one. If you let difficult people in your life, you will have a difficult life. And so it is their fault. Because if it is, if it's not their fault at all, then you can't escape it, which is kind of your, you don't want to overown these problems. Because there are times where it's like, you know what? Like I had this dream the other day. You know, just last night. No, no, two nights ago. It doesn't matter. I had this dream two nights ago about an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I have those dreams. <laughs> and um, I have occasionally, I have occasionally gotten quite sentimental about women I dated like when, before I got married, right? I would get very sentimental at one time. I actually got very sentimental about a girl that I dated, an engineer, in fact, uh, and, oh, in school. I got really, really sentimental to the point where, like, the people I was working with, uh, when we this is when we were working in the bush up north, would, would play that old song, You're My Obsession. <laughs> and... <laughs> This is one girlfriend that I never got sentimental about uh, breaking up with, and I dreamt about her last night, two nights ago. And it was one of these, uh, yeah, glad we never, <laughs> glad we never kept going, glad we never continued down that path. Because sometimes, I mean, it's good to take self-ownership, but so sometimes self-ownership, and I'm glad you brought this up, because this is a complicated topic. But sometimes the problem is other people. And your ownership then is managing your proximity to other people. So I couldn't have a good and peaceful and calm and satisfying and an enjoyable relationship with this woman. There were times when it was good, but, you know, ugh, such a... People who... Mm. Okay, maybe I'll do... Okay, so... People who are not very competent are initially quite fun to date when you're young, but it quickly becomes very exhausting. It quickly becomes very exhausting. I remember a friend of mine was dating this woman who was going to engineering school, and she just got so stressed about exams, and this would just be like such a big deal and and she couldn't sleep for like a week before exams and it was just like it's so exhausting when people just fundamentally are doing the wrong things with their life i mean this woman could have been great in some other field maybe she should have been a mom maybe she should be an artist i don't know but she went into this field and it's like this doesn't work for you and those people you know it's kind of easy to get into relationships with them because their standards usually aren't that high, but what happens, of course, is that then because they're constantly falling, they're constantly pulling you over and pulling you over and pulling you over, um, pulling you down, like just grabbing onto you as they fall. And you need to keep propping them up, and it quickly becomes exhausting, debilitating, and annoying, and you lose respect, and things just kind of spiral down. But then they're desperate for you not to leave them, so then you feel bad because they're just so needy, and it's like, oh man, it's a real, it's a real quicksand. And so with those kinds of people, you can't have a good relationship with them because they're incompetent or they're needy or they're not that smart or they're not mature or they're impulsive or they're are selected or whatever. I mean, you just, and so you say, well, my problems aren't other people. Now they'll constantly try to convince you that the problem is you, right? This is something that when you're surrounded by dysfunctional people, they will always try and say the problem is you, is with you. And they'll always try to get you to take more ownership, you know, like, well, I'm unstable, you're in a relationship with me, and the bad relationship is all your fault. That's very common. Now, of course, self-knowledge is very, very important, but self-knowledge is fundamentally to me about learning the limitations of willpower. What can you affect? What can you not affect? You can't make crazy people sane. Nobody knows how to do that. 
Nobody knows how to do that, how to make crazy people sane, how to make anti-rational people, let alone irrational people, rational. Nobody knows. Now, once you get that nobody knows, then you can have humility about your magical power, usually douser penis based, to change crazy people into sane people. I can't do it. You can't do it. No one can do it. Doesn't mean people can't get better. You know, you can put reasons and arguments out there and evidence out there, and sometimes it'll click with people or they'll get a yearning for it and they'll pursue it. So it's not like you can't make a difference in the world as a whole, but you can't pick any specific individual and make that person sane. And crazy people will always say, they're not crazy, you're crazy. And they will also try to convince you, like a cult, that no matter where you go, you'll end up with the same relationship, right? So you, you have some crazy girlfriend. She's exhausting, debilitating, up all night, crying, losing weight. Do I look fat in these jeans? Her so-and-so is successful. She's neurotic. You know, all the stuff that happens when you don't fill the house with babies and love. <laughs> all this kind of stuff. And she'll spend a huge amount of time trying to convince you that it's your fault, that you're the issue, or maybe it's mutual, but no matter what, she puts this curse on you, and the curse is, you go to the next girl, it's going to be the same. You go to the next girl, you're going to be the same. Oh, the one common denominator in all your failed relationships is you. Uh, usually it's your parents. But anyway. So, yeah, crazy people will always try and tell you that it's you, you, you. And that's paralyzing. And it traps you there because you say, well, okay, so this is a leaky boat, but the only other boats around are leaky too, so why bother switching? It's a fundamental way to keep you in a dysfunctional relationship. And so that's why I want to sort of give this bit, just because you were talking about you don't blame other people for your problems. Sure you do. 